All right, so for this practice, we are going to cover the factor P ion. So it's important to not only just know TG51, but you have to know each individual factor within the equation and any of the other very popular medical physics equations. It, it's a possibility they just give you TG51 and say, what is this? What are the equations and the variables? But they may very well pick a certain factor and want you to know the very nitty gritty details of it. And that's why it's important to know all these factors. So a question may be simply providing P ion and say, where do you use this factor? What does it do? What is the equation to calculate this? How do you physically measure it? What values should you expect? What dependencies does it have? And should this differ between your gamma knife and LINAC units? So to begin, P ion is the ion recombination factor. So it accounts for ion recombination in the chamber before ions are collected by the central electrode. You use it for TG51 or anytime you want to calculate what the dose is in a gas-filled chamber. So now what is the equation? So this is somewhat of an ugly equation, but it's important for you to memorize it. So P ion is equal to one minus the high voltage divided by the low voltage. Now you're gonna divide all of that by your M reading when your voltage is high and your reading when your voltage is low. And again, you're gonna subtract that by your high voltage divided by your low voltage. Now this is for pulsed beams. If you have cobalt, this is going to slightly change or you're gonna square some of the terms. I'll let you look that up, but it's important to know the difference and why those are different. So now, how do you physically measure this? And this is a fantastic question to test your ability of a practical clinical physicist. A lot of people can memorize equations and little quirks about this factor, but do you actually know on the spur of a moment, how do you find P ion? So what you want to do to determine this, first of all, you want to put your chamber at 10 cm depth. Now that's important because obviously that is going to affect your readings and some of these values here. So first take a measurement and this is going to be M plus, and this is gonna be our raw. And typically, now it does depend on your clinic, but typically this is at 300 volts. I've only known it to be 300 volts, but not to say your clinic couldn't do something different. So your high voltage, your VH here is 300. So now you are gonna take that reading and take two or three readings, be sure that it's constant. And now you're gonna cut it down to one half that value. So now our voltage, assuming we have 300, is gonna be at 150 volts. Now TG51 and other reports say that when you change this voltage, you want to wait several minutes before measuring again. So do that, wait several minutes, take another reading, and this is going to be your MRA minus, and this 150 is our low voltage. So now you have all the readings and measurements necessary. You simply just plug them in to this equation and you find P ion. So now what values should you expect? So first of all, your P ion must be less than 1.05. Otherwise, you need to find a new chamber. Another thing though, your P ion also has to be greater than one. Because think about it, you are essentially correcting for ions that are recombining and you can't recombine and get a get more charge. It doesn't make any sense. So the value has to be greater than one, but it must be less than 1.05. So now what dependencies do we have? So the first one is based on our equation here. Obviously you see a lot of voltages. So our chamber bias is going to be our first dependency. And the bias is going to change the speed of ion collection. And then finally, we also have our dose rate. So the dose rate changes the density of the charge cloud within the chamber, and that is going to alter our P ion because of that. 
Should the values between gamma knife and linax differ? And they should. So continuous radiation, first of all, is going to have the lowest P ion values. We are then going to have our pulsed radiation. So that is like our linax. And then we are going to have like our magnetically scanned electron beams or like our pulse scanning is what I'll just put here. Any type of pulse scanning beam is going to have the highest P ion. So gamma knife would be here, linac would be here, and then pulse scanning radiation would have the highest. So that is P ion in a nutshell. If you have any questions, comment below. I will help where I can. Be sure you know this factor, know all the factors within TG51. Thanks for watching and happy studying.